Today, we're going to review a news article about the 2024 presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And from this, you are going to improve all areas of your fluency. Welcome back to J4S English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, I'll read the headline, who won the Harris-Trump presidential debate? On the left, we have Kamala Harris, and on the right, we have Donald Trump. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris met for the first time on the presidential debate stage in Philadelphia on Tuesday night. Now, of course, here, notice the importance of saying for the first time. This means that prior to the debate, for, before the debate, these two people had not met in person. Most likely they had phone calls with each other, but they had not seen each other in person. So that's met for the first time. Let's review these sentences. I'm meeting my boss tonight. So you can meet, the verb is meet, is in the present continuous because it's a planned action in the near future. I'm meeting my boss tonight. But you can use this for social purposes as well. I'm meeting my friends tonight. So you can use the verb to meet someone in a professional or social context. But let's review this one. I have a meeting. Notice here. What do you notice about this word compared to this word? A meeting. This is a noun and you know it's a noun because you have an article, a meeting, and the main verb is have. I have a meeting with my boss tonight. You don't have to specify with my boss, which is why this is in parentheses. It's optional. You could simply say, I have a meeting tonight. And then someone might ask you, oh, who are you meeting with? Who are you meeting with? But notice that this is not used in social situations. If you have a meeting, it's for a professional purpose. So you can only use this in professional situations, a meeting, the noun, but you can use the verb meet in both social and professional situations. Don't worry about taking these notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can find the link in the description. So they met for the first time on the presidential debate stage in Philadelphia on Tuesday night. Always pay attention to prepositions because notice we have on and then day of the week on Tuesday night. If it included a time, what preposition would you use with the time? The preposition is at, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. In a situation like this where there's a global audience is important and helpful to include the time zone, which is usually just an initial ET Eastern time. They may have shaken hands, but they did not hit it off. This is a very clever thing to say. Do you understand the meaning of this? Do you understand what is being communicated here? So they may have shaken hands. This means they shook hands. So although they used the modal verb may, which is often used for possibility, it may rain. In this case, it isn't a possibility. They shook hands. So shaken is the third form of the verb. The past simple is shook. So when you go like this with someone, you shake hands. So Kamala Harris and Donald Trump shook hands, but they did not hit it off. Do you understand the meaning of to hit it off? To hit it off is an idiom. It means to quickly have a good connection or bond with someone that you met. So you might say, my new coworker is awesome. We really hit it off. So you met your new coworker for the first time and very quickly you felt a close connection to that coworker. You felt like you had a lot in common, or this is a person you can easily talk to, spend a lot of time with. Basically, you like that person. You hit it off. We really hit it off. So as an idiom, we just use hit it 
off the it represents your relationship with each other so hopefully you think jennifer and i hit it off jennifer and i hit it off now i know we haven't met each other in person but we can still have a good relationship or a close connection and hopefully you felt that way when you first started watching my videos if so you can say jennifer and i hit it off if you agree with that, that we hit it off, put that's right, that's right. I certainly hope you feel that way. Put that's right in the comments. Are you enjoying this lesson? If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers from TV, the movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, expand your vocabulary with natural expressions, and learn advanced grammar easily. Plus, you'll have me as your personal coach. You can look in the description for the link to learn more, or you can go to my website and click on Finally Fluent Academy. Now let's continue with our lesson. In a fiery 90 minutes, Harris frequently rattled the former president with personal attacks that threw him off message. First, let's look at fiery, fiery. This sounds like it was an intense, energetic, fiery. So this is an adjective. You could say we had a fiery conversation. You had a conversation with someone, but it was intense, full of energy, and it could also be very passionate as well. So it makes sense they would use this adjective to describe the debate. In a fiery 90 minutes, 90 minutes being the length of the debate. In a fiery 90 minutes, Harris frequently, so adverb of frequency, it means it happened a lot more than it didn't happen. Harris frequently rattled. Do you know what this means to rattle someone? This is a verb to rattle, rattle. This means to make someone feel nervous, unsettled, or confused. Now notice the sentence structure here. Harris rattled the former president, the former president being Donald Trump. So Harris rattled Donald Trump. Harris made Donald Trump feel nervous, unsettled, or confused. This is commonly used in the passive voice. For example, the presenter, the person presenting, the presenter was rattled by the unexpected question. So they received the question and they became nervous or unsettled, they lost their ability to communicate because of this unexpected question. But you can use it in the active voice and say the unexpected question, this is the subject, rattled the presenter. So your verb is rattle and you need to conjugate that. It's very likely that you could get rattled in a job interview or an IELTS exam or anytime you're speaking in English. And that's why I'm here to help. So again, put that's right, that's right in the comments. Harris frequently rattled the former president with personal attacks. So this is how she made him feel nervous or unsettled or confused. It was with personal attacks that threw him off message. Here, this threw him off message means that the personal attacks made him become off message. Now, off message represents that in a debate, Trump has prepared, just like you would prepare for a job interview or your IELTS. He knows what he wants to say on a specific issue, let's say the economy. He has the specific points he wants to make, but because he was rattled, he didn't talk about those specific points, which were his message, he talked about other points which were not his message. So that is off message. When he talked about things that he shouldn't have been talking about at that moment in time. Let's continue. 
her pointed digs on the size of his rally crowns, his conduct during the Capitol riot, and on the officials who served in his administration who have since become outspoken critics of his campaign repeatedly left Trump on the back foot. This isn't the most common expression, to be honest, but repeatedly left Trump on the back foot. You can think of it as repeatedly rattled Trump, repeatedly threw him off message. Words that we already reviewed, you could replace that here. Repeatedly made him defensive, you could think of as well. And you might be wondering what pointed digs means. To be honest, this also is not that commonly used, but the replacement words are. So criticism would represent digs, her digs on the size, her criticism on the size. So criticism is a noun form. Criticize is the verb to criticize. So when you criticize someone or something, you talk about it negatively. So if you say, Jennifer, this video was not good you criticized my video. You said something negative about it. So that is criticism. So I could say, wow, that criticism, it hurt my feelings, but I will use it to make my videos better. Now pointed means direct. So you can indirectly criticize someone. You might say, well, Jennifer, you, your other videos were better than this one. So you're indirectly saying you didn't like this video. So indirect, your other videos were better. Direct, this video is not good. So she was directly criticizing Trump, her pointed digs. This is the noun form. But again, I think using the word criticism or criticize as the verb and using direct or indirect would be more common. Although now you know what this means if you see it in the future. So her criticism, and then this is what she was criticizing him on. You criticize someone on something, that's the preposition. Let's continue. The pattern for much of this debate was Harris provoking her Republican rival into making extended defenses of his past conduct and comments. So this extended defenses of his past conduct and comments, you could say provoking her Republican rival, this is Donald Trump, provoking Donald Trump into the back foot which would be into this defensive stance. But again, it would probably be more common just to say the word defensive to become defensive. Let's review these two words because they are very commonly used in both professional and social everyday situations. So to provoke, this is a verb, and this means to deliberately. Deliberately means on purpose. To deliberately cause a negative reaction in someone. This is something that siblings do with each other when they're young and even when they're old. Friends do this, coworkers do this. It exists in both professional and social situations. So a parent might say, stop provoking your sister. So stop doing things on purpose to make your sister angry, upset, annoyed, or frustrated, some sort of negative reaction. Now to here defenses, this is a noun, but the verb form is to be defensive, to be defensive. So the verb is be, and then defensive is the adjective. You can have the verb to defend like a soldier or even a mother defends her children, an animal defends their territory, for example, but to be defensive, this is defensive is an adjective. And this is when you protect yourself from criticism or attack, usually by justifying your actions or behaviors. So remember you criticized my video and you said you directly criticized my video and said, Jennifer, this video is not good. 
Now, maybe you were trying to provoke me. Maybe you said this on purpose to make me angry or upset for whatever reason. But regardless, maybe I become defensive and I try to justify this video and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't understand what a good video is. This video is amazing. You're just an idiot. <laughs> that could be how I'm trying to defend myself. And that is being defensive. So that is how one can be defensive, which is a common reaction in that situation, which is why I'm sharing it because it's very commonly used in personal and professional situations. Let's move on. He gladly obliged. Okay. So he gladly obliged. If he obliged, remember Kamala Harris was trying to provoke him to make defenses about his past conduct and comments, comments rather than staying on message. And he obliged, which means he did what she wanted him to do. He gladly obliged raising his voice. So to raise one's voice means to speak louder at times and shaking his head. So what I'm doing now is I'm shaking my head. We commonly do this when we're angry or annoyed. We shake our heads. So you can imagine he's raising his voice and shaking his head, both of which are taking him off message, which is what she wanted to do. If debates are won and lost on which candidate best takes advantage of issues where they are strong and defends or deflects on areas of weakness, Tuesday night tilted in favor of the vice president. Let's review the sentence structure for to take advantage of something because this is very commonly used. So of course your verb is take, that's what you'll conjugate advantage doesn't change and then of and you can have a noun or a gerund verb here we have a noun issues but if you have a verb it would be the gerund because you have a preposition of which is part of the expression the expression expression is to take advantage of something or doing something and this means to use a situation, the something or doing something to your benefit. So for example, he took advantage of, so take is our verb. This is in the past simple. He took advantage of working. So this is the gerund verb of working from home. So he benefited from this situation. The situation is working from home. And how did he benefit? to spend more time with his family. You don't have to include this part. The sentence is complete right here. He took advantage of working from home and it might be obvious how he benefited from that situation, but you can provide the specific reason as well. Now we talked about defend. Let's look at deflect. When you deflect, it means you avoid usually answering a question and you do it on purpose. So to purposely avoid, and you might do that by changing the topic. So in a job interview, if they ask you a question, but you don't want to answer the question for whatever reason, you could try to change the topic to something else. So that is you deflecting the question. So in this case, deflecting on areas of weakness. So to try to avoid talking about your areas of weakness, which seems like a good strategy in a job interview and I held a conversation you're having with your friend or coworker, any situation you might want to use this tactic of deflecting. Tuesday night tilted in favor. So imagine we have these represent the people who are voting. So we have the people voting for Kamala Harris, the people voting for Donald Trump. So if it tilts in her favor, it means that more people support Kamala Harris. So it's even, but then it tilts in her favor. 
but it could be the opposite. It's even and it tilts in Trump's favor. So it means that the more people are supporting or accepting one person over another or one issue over another. Let's continue. A snap CNN poll of voters watching said that Harris performed better and betting markets said the same. So CNN, this is a different news outlet. The article we're reviewing is from the BBC, but this article from the BBC is referencing a poll from CNN. Let's review snap because this is commonly used. So this means suddenly or quickly, but so suddenly or quickly that there isn't enough time for careful consideration. So it's letting you know that this poll where voters say, I think Harris won, I think Trump won, it was a snap. So that is to snap, the verb to snap, and it happens very quickly, right? So it was a snap poll, meaning that the voters didn't have a lot of time to carefully consider who won or who lost. Let's review these example sentences because this is commonly used. First impressions are important. So when you meet someone for the first time, how they think of you after their first impression is important because people make snap judgments. So they judge you quickly and suddenly without carefully considering. It's a snap judgment. This is also used with decisions. You can make a snap decision, which means you do it careful, quickly or suddenly, not carefully, quickly or suddenly without careful consideration. I made a snap decision and accepted the job. So you didn't carefully consider it. It was a snap decision. Debate watchers said 63% to 37% that Harris turned in a better performance on stage in Philadelphia. So turned in a better performance. I don't think this is the most common way to say this. I would just say that Harris performed better on stage in Philadelphia. I think that's a clearer way. And it's not very common to say I turned in a great performance. That isn't an expression I hear too much. You can turn in an assignment, which means you submit an assignment. So if you turn in a presentation, to me, that sounds like you submit a presentation for review. So honestly, I wouldn't say this. I would just say performed better. I think that's a lot clearer. Prior to the debate. So notice when you use prior, you need the preposition to. So you have prior to, and this means before before the debate, prior to. This is important because if you have a verb, you need the gerund verb. But the same with before, because before is also a preposition. So you could use a verb and say prior to watching the debate or before watching the debate or before the debate, because they mean the same thing. Prior to the debate, the same voters were evenly split. So evenly split means like this. So about 50-50, not exactly. It could be a little more, a little less. But then remember, it tilted in Kamala's favor. So more people supported or favored Kamala as the winner. But prior to the debate, the same voters were evenly split on which candidate would perform more strongly, with 50% saying Harris would do so and 50% that Trump would. So that's the split. The vast majority, vast makes it sound stronger. Majority means the biggest part, but that could be 51% to 49%, 51 is still the majority because it's bigger. But the vast majority sounds more like 80% or 75%. So it makes it stronger. 
the vast majority who tuned in. If you tune in to something on TV, YouTube, social media, if you tune in, it means you watch. So I could say, make sure you tune in to my next lesson. Make sure you watch my next lesson. So the vast majority who watched, who tuned in, said it had no effect on their presidential decision. Okay, so the people who watched the debate, even though it tilted in Kamala's favor, more people thought she won, it had no effect on their presidential decision, which means just because they thought she won the debate doesn't mean they're going to vote for her necessarily. Although among the debate watchers, Trump supporters were more likely than Harris supporters to say the event, the debate, gave them reason to reconsider. Okay. So if you reconsider, remember when you add re before a verb and the pronunciation is a long e, re, reconsider, it means you do the verb again. So this means to consider again. So if you make a snap decision later, you might want to reconsider that decision. You might want to think about it more because in reality, you didn't consider it in the first place because it was a snap decision. I wrote that example for you because snap decision, snap judgment is very commonly used so you can get comfortable using it. And that's the end of our article. So what I'll do now is I'll read the article from start to finish and this time you can focus on my pronunciation. Who won the Harris-Trump presidential debate? Donald Trump and Kamala Harris met for the first time on the presidential debate stage in Philadelphia on Tuesday night. They may have shaken hands, but they did not hit it off. In a fiery 90 minutes, Harris frequently rattled the former president with personal attacks that threw him off message. Her pointed digs on the size of his rally crowds, his conduct during the Capitol riot, and on the officials who served in his administration, who have since become outspoken critics of his campaign, repeatedly left Trump on the back foot. The pattern for much of this debate was Harris provoking her Republican rival into making extended defenses of his past conduct and comments. He gladly obliged, raising his voice at times and shaking his head. If debates are won and lost on which candidate best takes advantage of issues where they are strong and defends or deflects on areas of weakness, Tuesday night tilted in favor of the vice president. A snap CNN poll of voters watching said that Harris performed better and betting markets said the same. Debate watchers said 63% to 37% that Harris turned in a better performance on stage in Philadelphia. Prior to the debate, the same voters were evenly split on which candidate would perform more strongly, with 50% saying Harris would do so and 50% that Trump would. The vast majority who tuned in said it had no effect on the presidential decision, although among the debate watchers, Trump supporters were more likely than Harris supporters to say the event gave them reason to reconsider. Do you want me to make more lessons just like this? If you do, then put more, 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 put more, more, more in the comments below. And of course, make sure you like this lesson, share it with your friends and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And I have another news review about the 2024 presidential election. You can watch watch it right now.